Hi, this is Risa and welcome back to another video in my Stitch Along series. This video accompanies the kit review of Miss Convalia's Mixed Media Ribbon Embroidery Kit that I've uploaded in my channel. Isn't this just a gorgeous kit using a mix of satin ribbon embroidery and beadwork? So let's begin. This is what the kit cover looks like if you haven't watched the kit review. Now, if you've watched my other ribbon embroidery videos on my channel, you'll know that I use a muslin backing um, for my embroidery pieces. Now, you might want to get some muslin because it is not included in the kit. So what I do is I tack the cloth to the back of the main fabric with some running stitches. Now, you can use a white or black sewing thread I use white sometimes and black gives a good contrast to see where you're stitching. Make sure you stitch around the actual pattern and not on it. Uh, you can leave the ends free without being knotted so you can pull them out easily when you're finished with the ribbon work. So now I'm mounting it on the hoop that's included in the kit and I'm going to start with the white flowers. First things first, don't forget to iron your ribbons before stitching. I use a mini straightening iron, which you can buy on Amazon. You can use a normal iron. And I'm going to use the second largest chenille needle that's included in the kit for this size ribbon. So that's the second one there. Now, to start off, you need to cut a 45 degrees angle and then insert the needle into the ribbon to attach it and then fold the other end and insert the needle again in the center to create a little square knot as you can see. To stitch the petals of the white flowers I am going to use simple straight stitches by coming out at the center of the flower and inserting the needle at the top of the petals. Now make sure you adjust the ribbon so that it's nice and puffy. Don't pull too tight against the fabric. As you can see here I entered at the bottom for the first petal and then at the top for the second. This way you're able to save the length of ribbon. Here I'm stitching a ribbon stitch by inserting the needle in the center of the ribbon. So you can alternate between straight stitches and ribbon stitches to create the petals for this flower and to give it some variety. To stitch the yellow stamens of the flower, I am stitching a French knot with a tail. As you can see, I've extended the thread a little bit from the start and created French knots at the end. And this way you can create cute little stamens for the flowers. Here I'm stitching a detached chain stitch to create the buds of the white flowers. You can see you create a little loop and then stitch it onto the fabric in the top and you can stitch a straight stitch close to it to give it a little bit more body.
I'm going to use the beading needles in the kit to start stitching the berries in the pattern and I'm going to use the larger of the two black beads as you can see there are three sets of beads in the kit here and for the larger berries I'm going to use the larger black beads now what you'll need to use are the beading needles as I had indicated initially these are very small needles and the fishing wire that's been included in the kit and you need a little bit of white floss to be able to create the knot and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now it's going to take time to thread the needle with the fishing wire so you will need a bit of patience for that. It helps to bite the end of the fishing wire a little bit to flatten it to insert it into the needle and you can see that there's a little bit of tension when you pull that and here I have combined a little bit of white thread to the end of the beading wire to create a knot that helps the knot not to slip essentially. So now I'm going to start beading using a row of three beads, inserting it into the fabric as you can see pulling it out behind one of, of the last beads and then inserting the next row of three to four beads. Now you might want to just watch carefully as I complete this first beadwork here. Now here you can see I have one bead extra actually and so I am taking it out and using only three beads which I'm going to insert into the fabric here and then step back a bit behind the first or the last bead essentially and then inserting it back into the fabric to fasten it. Same thing for the next row of beads here I've used four beads and I'm just picking up two more for the ends, inserting it into the fabric, reinserting the needle onto the last bead and inserting it into the fabric to fix it. Now to create a little bit of body for the berries, I am going to stitch a second row of beads on top of the first layer of beads, as you can see here. So essentially just stitching in between the first layer of beadwork. To stitch the stems, I am going to stitch twisted ribbon stitch here by using the brown ribbon in the kit, as you can see, and I'm going to use a single strand of brown thread to couch that stem in place.
Now to stitch the thorns, I'm going to use two strands of the brown thread in the kit and stitch a combination of straight stitches and chain stitches as you can see here. So to do the chain stitch, you create a loop and then stitch the tip in place to create a pointed tip for the thorn. Or you can just stitch straight stitches as I'm doing for some of the other thorns. Now for the spider web, really simple straight stitches with two strands of the dark grey and light grey threads that are in the kit. Moving on to the leaves, I'm going to stitch a combination of ribbon stitches and straight stitches for the berries and the flowers, as you can see here. This is the best part of the pattern, the colorful fall colored leaves that really attracted me to buying it in the first place. I'm gonna use a whole range of reds, oranges, yellows, and greens here. And um, all you need to do is stitch simple straight stitches alternating between the colors. Now the pattern guide does give you an indication of which ribbons to use, uh, or you can just follow on to this stitch along video. Now that I've completed the embroidery, I have ironed the fabric to smooth out the hoop lines. And I'm gonna use this gorgeous wooden frame that I bought on Etsy, link is provided in the description below to frame this embroidery piece as a wall art gift that I have for someone in mind. Now, keep watching the video to see how to frame this if you plan to use this particular frame as well. You might want to cut out some of that muslin work. You can also frame it with it if you're not using this particular frame and just using the hoop. Um, but however, if you are using the same hoop, I suggest you cut out the muslin work around the embroidery. Make sure you don't snip off any of the ribbons or thread work accidentally uh, before you pull it across the base of that frame.
And there you have it, a beautifully framed wall art with mixed media embroidery. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.